Jim Jubeck for Jubeck Asset Management YouTube videos. Um, today we're doing a um, hot money button now piece, uh, and the hot money button now is uranium. It's been tough in terms of news to, to follow stories that aren't in the top line. It's not about Donald Trump's trials, they're not about uh, Gaza, they're not about Ukraine, um, they're not even about inflation. Uh, and interest rates. So uh, there was an interesting piece of um, legislation passed by Congress. Basically, um, Congress decided that it was going to ban the import of uranium from Russia. Uh, and the ban goes into effect 90 days after Biden signs it. Biden, President Biden signed it a uh, couple days ago. So 90 days from now. Uh, this is important because Russia is one of the world's biggest producers of uranium. Uh, one of the Peculiar workings of unintended consequence is that way back in 1993, uh, when the Soviet Union was falling apart, and there was a lot of worry about um, what's going to happen to all the fissionable material that's in nuclear warheads in places like um, Ukraine or Kazakhstan. Um, so, a program was set up with $500 million to buy um, enriched uranium that would look that in the warheads. Uh, and it was the program was called um, Megatons to the Megawatts. The idea is that, that the U.S. would get these out of the, the gold weapons market and use them to power to power utility um, nuclear plants. It was a very successful program. The unintended consequence is that it really hammered the price of uranium. Uh, the government was buying these all this uranium on the, on the market, uh, and it meant that what you really had is a situation where. Mining uranium in the United States and in Canada um, was not a very profitable thing. You didn't have a whole lot of people in that business anymore. So that what you've got now is that the 10 largest producers of uranium, uh, actually since 2021, uh, are um, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, France, Cameco, which is a Canadian company, CGN, which is China, uh, Navos, uh, which is Uzbekistan, and another Chinese company, CNNC, uh, and then uh, Arm2, which is Russian. All these, all these are major suppliers uh, at a time when it looks like maybe um, because of global warming and the need to decarbonize the, the energy system uh, and to find base power replacements for coal plants, it looks like uranium and nuclear power maybe we can come back. So what you've got a situation here where uh, Congress just said, hey, we're not going to buy uh, from the major supplier of the market. Uh, you'd think that uranium prices will go up. Uh, it's kind of a war right now between the supply and demand for uranium uh, in the market and worries about uh, the new generation of, of nuclear plants. Not so much because the technology is hard. The technology, I think, is better. Uh, the problem is that the financing is hard because the, the real worries here are how long is it going to take for one of these built. There's no real track record. Uh, track record in the last number of conventional plants has really been terrible. Uh, huge cost overruns, huge decade long delays in delivery. No utility really wants to get into a situation where, hey, we think we're spending $2 billion, but it's going to turn out to be $10 billion, and we think it's going to be a year, and now it's going to be. Five years. No, no utility wants to get into that financial prospect. So the question is whether um, the U.S. government or uh, AI companies like Microsoft and, and Amazon and Google, Alphabet, uh, that need all this power but aren't going to be able to get from the grid are going to invest in these. Microsoft, for example, is, is a big investor uh, in nuclear power to power uh, its algorithms. So that's the war that's going on right now. Uh, I own one. Uh, uranium stock, Cameco, uh, and that's ticker CCJ uh, in the GRF Higgs portfolio. Uh, I'm going to add another one um, in the, the millennial portfolio because I think this is a longer term, longer duration story. Uh, Next gen energy. Uh, one of the reasons it's a longer duration is they don't just yet uh, produce any uranium. They've got projects underway. Big, big, big. Um, source, uh, potential source in Canada. Um, I think that makes the stock uh, something that you might want to think about if you have a 10 year horizon. Uh, stock is up about 4% eh, year to date. 
Um, but it's been pounded in the last um, three months down to almost 18% in that time period. So um, that'd be a good time to get in um, on a long-term story if you've got the patience to sit and wait for this all to play out. I think next gen energy uh, ticker is NXE uh, would be a good way to play this over the long term. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed or uh, found this video useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get a notification when we do our next one. We're doing about three a week, but not always the same day. Subscribing to that is free. Get notifications for free. Um, also free, um, my gbackpicks.com um, site, which has three portfolios, um, including the one that currently runs uh, Um And so it's got three portfolios for 12 to 18 month stocks, uh, five, year, five year stocks, um, dividend stocks. Uh, and you should monitor your posts today. You can also uh, subscribe. Uh, that will get you six portfolios. And instead of just one or two posts, you should get you two or three or four posts a day. The additional posts, besides the ones already on, on the free site, are an ETF portfolio, a volatility portfolio that sometimes plays options uh, and looks to hedge, uh, as well as a uh, portfolio for even longer term, which is where this, this pick of next gen energy is going. Uh, for people with, uh, you know, in their 20s or 30s who want to have a really long time horizon to let things uh, perk through and therefore get profits from where that time plays out. You can find links to all of them down below. Uh, also, you can find a link to my Substack. My wife and I moved to Italy in September. Uh, we started a Substack called We Moved to Italy, uh, free. Uh, go to Substack, subscribe, get your notification when we put up our next one. Uh, Falls of Adventures, Culture, Food. Right now, I'm working on one about Vivaldi, who is the, sort of the core musician of, of Venice, which is where we're living right now. Um, in fact, if there were a classical music station in Venice, it would be all Vivaldi all the time. Um, anyway, so we're leaving Venice uh, Friday uh, and going back to New York for uh, a couple of weeks to watch my daughter graduate, go to a friend's wedding. Hi, James. Hi, Laura. Um, and then uh, we're going to go back to Italy in uh, oh, June. Uh, we're not moving back to Venice. We're moving to Sicily. We're going to be outside Catania. So that's the East Coast. We're going to rent a house on the slopes of Mount Etna. Live volcano! Hello! Um, and we'll be there until October, and then we're returning to Venice. So if you want to follow those programmations, uh, subscribe to my Um We moved to Italy. So thanks very much for watching.